So welcome, everybody. Um, in a previous Curious and Quirky episode, I talked about the innovation strategy of using limitation to liberate creativity, a counterintuitive, paradoxical, oxymoronic notion. And I want to continue that theme. This time, I want to talk about looking back to actually modernize uh, your brand, your category, your products. And I think the most obvious one is sort of in the food industry, the notion of finding uh, superfoods. And you might thought have thought that they're well, they're all taken up, but they aren't. As it turns out, at the South by Southwest conference in Austin this week that's just ending, one of the featured innovations, right? One of the future innovations is a superfood is called chocho, okay? And chocho is only grown in the Andes in South America. And uh, it's a plant protein. It's got more protein per ounce, if you will, than chickpea, soy, and quinoa combined. I'm going to give you two more examples, but the note, one of the wonderful things about using these superfoods, A, they give you extra nutritional benefits, but also they do what? They allow your brand to stand out in a potentially commoditized market. You get to tell stories that nobody else can tell if you have this ingredient. And in this uh, world of overcommunication, stories are critical, right, to succeeding in marketing. Two other superfoods I want to mention. I know both of these firms. The first one is from Real Greens Foods. It's a superfood called lemna. It's also called duckweed, and it's also called water lentils, right? It's going to be used in a salad dressing uh, that my, my friends are going to market. This is uh, the most natural bioavailable source of B12. And the third one is another firm I know. It's called Jovial Foods, and they've gone <laughs> over the top of this one. They have literally found the the most ancient of ancient grain. This grain has been around for 12,000 years, sort of Neolithic man. The grain is called einkorn, E-I-N-K-O-R-N. It's grown in uh, Europe, and they're using it to uh, reinvent their pastas and talk about all natural, organic. You got it. So let's go to the second notion about looking back to look forward. There is now a beauty trend that has received over 160 million hits on TikTok. And that beauty trend is called slugging, all right? So slugging is the notion that you take Vaseline and you put a thin layer on your face at night, and that'll keep the moisture in. And recently, this has been popularized by the Korean a beauty industry, and that's become hot. That's one of the reasons it's become so hot. And some of you in the audience may say, well, wait a second, that's not a new idea. That's been around for a long time. And I can confirm that. My business partner, Gary Fraser, actually used to run the Vaseline business for Cheeseboro Ponds and Unilever. And if you go to their site, you'll see that there are 101 uses for Vaseline. And, and those, that is one of them. Marilyn Monroe actually used to use it as part of her beauty regimen. But the notion here, the wonderful thing is, yes, something from long ago could be reinvigorated. And in part, uh, one way to do that is sort of creating a trend and, if you will, branding that trend. OK, the next thing I want to talk about, and this was another innovation that was featured prominently at South by Southwest this week. It's a product called Cold Snap. This harkens back to the days of yore when we were kids. I don't know if you had it, but we had, you know, sort of the old ice cream maker, home ice cream maker machines, the wooden thing. And you put rock salt in there and you spin it, you know, forever and you get this fresh ice cream at home. Well, they uh, have taken that notion and they've actually combined it with a more recent trend, which is what? Self-serves and pods, right? And so they've actually imitated the Keurig model. And uh, I actually happen to know the longest running board member of Keurig. So I had last night, I had him look at this product and tell me, tell me what he thought. The idea, again, is you can use pods. These are shelf-stable pods. You put them in this machine and 90 seconds to two minutes later, you have fresh ice cream, right? And he said, yeah, it's a very interesting idea. His reservation was that, you know, they marketed Keurig. I don't know if you know, but they... They initially got into the world through offices because it was less messy. It was more convenient. People could get what they want. You wouldn't waste, you know, doing a cup of coffee, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of reasons that Keurig Green Mountain went from $300 million to a $6 billion company before they were sold. But the wonderful thing here is, um, you know, again, they're looking uh, in the past to, to invent the future. Now, just so you know, the inside story, the founder of this company is really kind of wonderful. His two daughters, he got them off of fairy tales and had them keeping invention journals. And that's what led to uh, this breakthrough idea of, idea of making uh, self-serve ice cream at home uh, with the pods. The last one I'll share, actually, again, looking back to invent the future, 
You can also look at kitchen remedies. And my business partner, Gary Fraser, when he was running the uh, oral care division at Unilever, they looked back to what? They looked back to a kitchen remedy of combining baking soda and peroxide that led to the $200 million Mentadent business. And so I will end this little thing with hopefully a curious and quirky quote. I love this quote. It was, it's was it been attributed to Mark Twain. Historian's not sure he actually said it. But the quote is, uh, history doesn't rhyme, but it does repeat itself. 